Hello everyone. Our Minister John has suggested that we could create some videos where someone will choose a hymn or a worship song that is in some way significant to them and their faith and they'll explain that in the video and then they'll play through the song and with words on the screen you, the viewer, will be able to sing along. And this is really just another way for us to be able to sing our praises to God um, together as a church family during this period of um, lockdown restrictions. So the song that I would like us to have a think about for a moment is one that was written in 2001 by Keith Getty and Stuart Townend and it's called In Christ Alone. Now, the meaning that I take out of the words um, in, in this song is that mainly in Christ alone we're set free. We're set free from, in verse 2, God's wrath. In verse 3, we're set free from sin's curse. And in verse 4, we're set free from our old self. So, verse 2 then, in Christ alone we're set free from God's wrath. Uh, line 6 of verse 2 reads, the wrath of God was satisfied. Now, we know that God is a holy God and we know that we are a sinful people. Um, and yet, God wants to have a relationship with us. He desires to have a relationship with us. Um, and so something had to happen so that that could be the case. Um so Peter in his first letter teaches us that Jesus bore our sins in his own body on the tree. Jesus bore God's wrath and God's anger at our sin so that we wouldn't have to. And um, we know that the name for this is propitiation and we can um, read about it in Romans chapter 3. God is just and fair in making us right with himself because he didn't just ignore our sin. He found a way for our sin to be dealt with so that we wouldn't have to and so that we could be reconciled to him. So verse 2, in Christ alone we're set free from God's wrath through propitiation. Verse 3 would teach us that in Christ alone we're set free from sin's curse. And we read in line 6 of verse 3, sin's curse has lost its grip on me. Well, what is sin's curse? And I think one of the things about sin's curse is that I am a slave to it. And you are a slave to it. Because um, we sin when we don't want to. And we sin when we don't even realise that we're doing it. Um, and so we're captive to sin. But the wonderful thing is that in, it, we read in, ver, in line 8 of verse 3 that we're bought with the precious blood of Christ. And that's known as redemption. Um, we can read about it in Romans chapter 6. Um, Jesus has bought us out of slavery to sin with his precious blood. But more than that, um, we, we know that part of sin's curse is also that eventually it will lead to our death. However, in line 4 of verse 3, we read, Up from the grave he rose again. And this speaks of Jesus' resurrection. Um, and Paul writes to the Corinthians in his first letter in chapter 15 um, about Jesus' resurrection and how that means that he is victorious over death. But it means then that if we have our faith and trust in Jesus, um, then we can too have the gift of God, which is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So therefore, in Christ alone, we're set free from sin's curse through redemption and through resurrection. In verse 4 we find that in Christ alone we're set free from our old self. If we've been set free from God's wrath and we've been set free from sin's curse then um, Paul teaches um, us in his first letter to the Corinthians in chapter 5 that we are a new creation. The old has passed away and the new has come. And we can see in line one of verse four here in, in, our, in our hymn that there's no guilt in life and there's no fear in death. Because we've been made a new creation in Christ, we don't need to have any more guilt and we don't need to have any more fear. Because Jesus has dealt with our sin and he has dealt with the problem of our death. And so then we read also in line 4 of verse 4 that Jesus commands our destiny. He is now in control of our lives so we have no need to fear. But he'd only be in, obviously in control of our lives if we um, commit each day of our lives to him and we choose for him to be in control of our lives. 
So there's no more need to fear because we're a new creation. And we can see then uh, uh, more than that, we can see in, in, in lines um, five and six of verse four that there's no power of hell and there's no scheme of man can ever pluck me from his hand. So there's no power in hell or on earth that will ever be able to take away from us that um, new life that we have in Christ, that new identity that we have in him because he has given it to us and so there's no power um, that will be able to pluck it from us. And so therefore, um, we can sing with joy. Um, verse 1. Um, he is our sure and certain hope. Uh, line 3 says that he's our solid ground. And therefore, um, he, he's our only comfort and our only protection in times of distress and uncertainty. Um, line 4 teaches us that he is firm through our fiercest drought and storm. Line 6 and 7. Um, he stills our fears. And he causes um, our strivings to cease. He's our comforter. He's our all in all. And so we can sing with all our hearts then um, that here in the love of Christ I stand. <laughs>